Hello Cowboys Nation! Here's another round of Dallas Cowboys news. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like it so you don't have to. Dallas Cowboys players doxed on Twitter after Buffalo Bills game. Two Dallas Cowboys players were doxed or had personal identifying information about them revealed following the team's disappointing performance against the Buffalo Bills on December 17. According to CBS News, safeties Jaron Curse and Wanya Thomas incurred the wrath of disgruntled and overzealous fans after Curse made a post on his Twitter slash X account questioning why he was flagged for a personal foul during the game. Some fans responded that he had played badly, prompting Thomas to defend his teammate from the criticism of the fans. To their concern, Thomas had his phone number published online and Curse had his home address leaked. Thomas spoke to the Dallas Morning News, saying that for him, a line had been crossed. I can take criticism, said Thomas, who also told the paper that he missed three tackles against the Bills. But you cross the line when you start doing stupid things like that, really. It's a line you can't cross when you start sharing addresses, people's numbers, and other things. At the end of the day, it's still a game. People have a life. After a practice session, Kurz also said that the violation, to him, signaled a threat, saying, that's where my kids lay their heads, that's where my fiancé lays his head here, I'm not the one who can play, that's all, simple, not the one to play with. An unidentified team official also told the Dallas Morning News that the Cowboys have had to deal with similar incidents for quite some time. Fans' interactions with players sometimes reach a level that borders on disrespect for various minor infractions, such as not helping fantasy football officials score enough points to win a league title or playoff game or costing fans money on their bets or accumulations. Most players, including Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott, have let fans know that they don't care about anyone's fantasy sports life or bets. That's not their reason for playing football, they want to help their NFL teams win but the side comments from fans worry them. As Dallas Cowboys cornerback Jordan Lewis told Sports Illustrated, it's getting crazy out there, it's getting crazy, Lewis said. People are getting more aggressive than before and it's not a good place to be right now. Des Bryant criticizes former coach, former Cowboys star, says he doesn't like talking football with certain women. Former Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Des Bryant made NFL headlines with big plays, controversial moments and confrontations with coaches. A few years after retiring, the former All-Pro is now generating more controversy because of comments on social media. Bryant, the 24th overall pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, starred in Dallas from 2010 to 2017. A three-time Pro Bowl selection and the NFL's all-time leader in touchdowns in 2014, he was one of the best wide receivers in American football during his early years. Des Bryant stats, career 527 receptions, 7,506 receiving yards, 75 touchdowns in 119 games. However, Bryant's career began to derail in 2015. Coming off three consecutive seasons with double-digit touchdowns and more than 1,200 receiving yards, the 6 feet 4 inches wideout suffered a fractured foot in week one and later dealt with ankle injuries, limiting him to nine games. In his last three seasons in Dallas, Bryant totaled just 2,035 yards in 38 games. Bryant signed with the New Orleans Saints in November 2018, but suffered a ruptured Achilles tendon two days later in training camp. After missing the 2019 campaign, he signed with the Baltimore Ravens. Although he was only with the team for a few months, that experience evidently impressed him. Bryant shared on Saturday on X that in his brief time with the Ravens, he was angered by how poorly quarterback Lamar Jackson was coached by offensive play caller Greg Roman. The change of offensive coordinator to Todd Munkin is one of the reasons he considers Baltimore an elite team this year. The sentiment seemed to be shared by many Ravens fans, with many seeing it as confirmation that Roman was a big part of the problem in Baltimore. However, those weren't the only comments Bryant made on Saturday night that provoked a reaction. After suggesting that Stefan Diggs is the best player on the Buffalo Bills roster and calling for more criticism of Josh Allen, Bryant responded to a fan's defense of Allen by saying that he doesn't like talking football with certain women because they don't like it. I don't know their role in talking about a man's game. The comment immediately exploded, with Bryant receiving a barrage of criticism. 
He later added that he enjoys discussing football with some women, but stood by his claim that the woman he originally responded to clearly didn't know much about the game. Chargers' valiant effort as spoilers is ruined by Bill's field goal in final seconds. On a night when they finally lost their last playoff hopes, the Chargers still found something quite remarkable. Coming off perhaps the most embarrassing loss in franchise history, they remained 12 and a half point underdogs long enough to make the Buffalo Bills squirm before falling 24 to 22 at SoFi Stadium. Nobody cares about moral victories in the NFL, but the Chargers at least emerged from a devastating defeat. My question was how would they react the first time Buffalo punched them in the face, said interim head coach Giff Smith. We go up and then Buffalo scores to make it 14 to 10. That might be where you crash and burn, but they rallied and fought. The Chargers were coming off a 63-21 away loss to the Las Vegas Raiders, a defeat that proved to be the end game for Brandon Staley as head coach and Tom Telesco as general manager. Both were sacked the morning after the defeat. Read more, NFL Week 16 Picks, Cowboys Dolphins, Ravens 49 Airs Best Bets on Christmas Weekend. So the way the Chargers responded against the Bills would be telling. They took a 10-0 lead less than two minutes into the second quarter, fell behind at halftime, but went back up 22-21 in the final six minutes. Everyone played with confidence, said safety Elohi Gilman. I feel like we should have beaten them, for sure. The Bills won on a 29-yard field goal by Tyler Bass with 28 seconds left. Buffalo, 9-6, entered needing a win for postseason purposes, the Chargers, 5-10, had nothing to play for except their paychecks in each other. Under Staley, who gave the defensive signals, the Chargers used a complicated system that routinely relied on late adjustments as the offense prepared to snap the ball. The result was often confusion or misalignment that would generate a big play. The Chargers spent much of this season as the NFL's worst defense against the pass. But on Saturday, Gilman said coordinator Derek Ansley reduced disguises and rules so players could rely more on their talents and instincts. We use a very simple menu, Gilman said. Just keeping things simple, letting us make the adjustments we think are best and taking responsibility for that. That just allowed us to play fast, without a lot of scheming. The Chargers limited Buffalo to 16 first downs and an average of 3.5 yards on 30 rush attempts, while forcing three turnovers. The Bills produced just two plays, Josh Allen completed passes of 57 and 36 yards to Gabe Davis that gained more than 20 yards. The game plan was rigid, safety Derwin James Jr. said when asked about the impact of Smith taking over as head coach. I feel like all week, in practice, we had fun. We just missed some plays today. What did you think of the news? Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any Dallas Cowboys news. Thank you.